Better shake your booties for black girl nerds. Better shake your booties for black girl nerds. All right. Hi, I'm Kat Combs with Black Girl Nerds. Like, I am freaking out on the inside. (laughs) Thank you. Hi. It's nice to meet you. And I just got to say this. One of my very closest friends, like my sister, is named Kat. So I just, and I do a rap and I've got to do it now for you. Are you ready? Okay. A cat, cat, a kittles, cat, kitty, kitty, cat, cat, come on. I said cat. Cat, a kittles, cat, kitty, kitty, cat, cat, come on. And it's Kathy and a Jimmy, and her name is Cat. And now I'm talking to you, and I never do that rap, but I had to because I'm looking at, like, you know, come on. That was the highlight of my life. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. So, this is what I do in my spare time, Cat. This is what I do. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. So, oh my goodness, now I can't think of anything else. <laughs> Me either. I do. I'm totally texting Kathy and Jimmy when we get off this call and say, guess what I just did for Kat? I just did the rap. I did the rap. I can't help it. <laughs> I love it. Um, okay. Schmigadoon. Yes. I yes. love you in Schmigadoon. What, <laughs> Thank you. What do you think sets this musical show apart from anything else we've seen? I can tell you what I think the key is, and no pun, but (laughs) why are you making me laugh? We're friends, right? (laughs) I know. It's Keegan-Michael Key. (laughs) Ha, ha, ha. I'm so hilarious. He's the key. I think he's the key to a lot of the piece because my brother hates music theater, (laughs) and he's like, please don't ask me to come to another one of your shows. (laughs) And that person exists. There's a lot of them. And the key was to watch Keegan transform and to have the heart of our show with Cecily. Then everybody else can be the nut jobs that we are, you know? And the the other key to Schmigadoon is when we do music theater and we do it well, it's we sing it because we can't speak it anymore, no matter how wacky, no matter how crazy it seems, Kat. And that what that is just plain old making it real. Otherwise, if we don't buy it, our audience, and that, and then if we don't do it well, we get made fun of, as we should. But when we do it well, and this is a key to our writer and our director, if I may, for one second, with Sonnenfeld, he says, I hate musicals. I'm like, too bad because you do them really well. Um, he, he, he's our perfect guide. You know, he's our perfect guide. Okay, okay. So let's see, your character is just a whippersnapper of a of a woman. <laughs> That's a perfect description. <laughs> who did you or what in, who inspired you for that for that character? Oh my gosh. Most of the people I'm related to. <laughs> I'm so I'm in trouble. Um you know, I may or may not be related to some people like her. Um, I think I wanted the Joker lips because he's maniacal. Mm-hmm. Um, but but what I always found interesting about the Joker was what made him maniacal. He didn't start out that way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Can you believe these are my <laughs> these are this my is things. great for for black girl nerds nerdiness. Thank the you, max. thank yes. you, thank you, nerds, because I'm one. <laughs> also, in the in the number tribulation that I did, I I was not forced to do, but glad to get to do in one take. That's how Sonnenfeld got me. He said, you're going to do it in one take. I did little things, little nerdy things, if I may, for myself. I, you know, we were during the election and I'm not going to get political because that's not what we're talking about, but I did hold the Bible upside down. And some people have thought it was a mistake. It was absolutely not a mistake. Okay. Um, (laughs) It was an homage to one of our former leaders. Um, I think joker political i think backstory for me mm-hmm. she might have been at one time dove cameron's character i think she was a young betsy ah. i think that i think it's what her journey what made her become who she is and then of course at the end you know cat if i hadn't had that little ribbon on top where 
Cecily goes, you know, you're kind of a judgmental asshole <laughs> to Mildred. I'm glad that line existed because I want people to watch the show and be, sometimes I look at characters and go, ooh, that's such an awful person. And then I go, uh, wait, you have that quality sometimes. <laughs> so I like the fact that people maybe can look at her and go, ooh, ooh, it's funny, but ooh, I hope I'm not ever like, you know what I right. mean? Exactly. Yes. So I, I went there with a corset. It was too tight. I made myself very uncomfortable. I went with the dark hair. I had that, like I said, the Joker lips. Mm -hmm. I can't even talk about how, how tight that corset was. And after lunch, how miserable I was. Oh, no. But it works. I needed all of that. Yeah, it because absolutely I'm, works. I'm a, yeah, I'm a kind of a hat. You know, I'm kind of a, kind of a. So I needed that. I needed that. And. Some might say one day I got, I had a sandwich. Boy, you're really getting the goods. One day I had a sandwich and and they make it for me kind enough in that part of a pandemic. Okay. Mm -hmm. They make it for me I, kind enough to do so. It's turkey Swiss. I'm the same every day. Like I'm the same. They're, egg white bites from Starbucks in the morning and turkey and Swiss in the afternoon. And I'm good to go. The Swiss, you know, sometimes Swiss cheese has that plastic in it in mm -hmm. between. I had, this was we I don't know this was towards the end and Mildred's was sort of living in me a little bit and I uh -huh. bit I bit into that thing and I had that plastic in there and I opened the door and I went I <laughs> Yelena was who assisted me there and by the way this is like my family I said Yelena 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 I said Yelena <laughs> plastic in the Swiss and she I'm so sorry and I was like holy crap. I'm turning into Mildred. I need to go home now. <laughs> and that is a fact that happened. Okay. I love this. This has been. And that's, just... I've only told you that, Kat, I that you this. are the only one yep. that knows. Thank you. Thank you. I can definitely leave this interview just like this is the highlight of everything. So thank, <laughs> thank you, you so much for your time. And I wish you all the success with Schmigadoon. Thanks, Kat. And hopefully I'll see you and again. And thank you so much because I miss my bestie. So I miss her so much. And you just brought a smile to my face. So thank you. Thank uh -huh. you. Of course. Have a great day. <laughs> you too. It's a hey. pleasure to be here with you. You too, Kat. I'm so excited to speak with you. Yay. So let's get started with just what sets Schmigadoon apart from other musical shows? Well, it's been a minute since we've had a musical show like this, right? Schmigadoon um, transports you into a different time period, right? Um, and brings back that old Hollywood 1940s feel, right? We've had many, many modern musical television shows lately. Um, you know, Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist, um, even calling back to, to Glee, right? And this is, this is something different. This reminds you what it felt like to, to watch someone like a Gene Kelly and singing in the rain, uh, to feel that magic, right? But you get to see it with more diverse faces and you laugh a little more, I think. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of, you know, diverse faces, what were some of the more diverse elements that you were proud to see that you were excited to even be a part of the show because of you know i will say like i was my casting um in and of itself right you know emma tate is she's the town school marm and there are many uh classic musical theater uh characters that live within her right mary poppins mary and the librarian um you know, Annalie and Owens from The King and I, and those are women who do not traditionally look like me, right? Um, I'm a far cry from Deborah Carr. Um, <laughs> and to be perfectly frank, you know, it's not often I get to hear this music, this style of music sung by women who look like me. And it's mm. not that we can't, um, but, you know, save maybe Audra McDonald, the, right. our queen, the great <laughs> Audra McDonald. Uh, so it was a real treat for me to be asked to play a character like this who is both um, a feminist and extremely feminine. Mm -hmm. um, uh, she does not sacrifice her sense of self for romance. They are right. one and they, they work hand in hand. Um, and she also gets to sing 
in the style of beautiful 1940s musicals, both <laughs> up tempos and ballads. You get them both. Yes. I swear. <laughs> she was an embarrassment of riches, this character. <laughs> Well, I absolutely adored your character, and I'm I'm hoping we get to see more of her if there's a second season. I just want to dive down deep in, like, I want to know more about her. I want to spend time with her. Oh, <laughs> I love that. Testament. Yeah. Yeah. I always say, or I have started to say that, you know, Emma is the, like, every woman. You want to hang out with her. You want to spend time with her because you never know what she's going to say. Is she going to burst out in a song? Or is she going to, like, <laughs> quietly, like, let you know about yourself? You're just not sure where it's going to go. <laughs> right. <laughs> So I guess last question, just to make it fun. Is there a musical you would not mind being stuck in? You know, it's going to feel like a cliche answer, but I wouldn't mind being stuck in Chicago, the musical. Yeah. I feel like I'd be dodging a lot of bullets, but that's okay. <laughs> I mean, it's a very sexy musical. I find the women, like, know themselves, their bodies. Yes. Um, you know, and and who doesn't want a live band on stage with you at all times? I'm like, give me the horn line. I want <laughs> you to announce when I am going to the kitchen. I, like, <laughs> I think that would be fabulous. <laughs> I think that's a great answer. So thank you. <laughs> no, my pleasure. <laughs> Ariana, it's been such a pleasure meeting you and speaking with you. And I wish you the best. Thank oh, you. Thank you. Thank you, Kat. You have a good one. You too. Yes, I'm Kat Combs with Black Girl Nerds. Catalina, ¿cómo estás? Estoy bien, gracias. <laughs> good. <laughs> <laughs> I was so excited to see you in this show. I was such a fan of you in like Jane the Virgin, and I just love the magical realism for you what was what was it about Shmigadoon that really sets it apart from other musical shows everything Catalina everything it's such a beautiful show so well written it's a musical which is what I like to do the most to be on stage doing musical theater so it was just a gift uh, from the gods uh, to be honest you know some projects you do and some are, are gifts from heaven and this was Shmigadoon for me it was Beautiful. But again, I was talking to an iHeartRadio guy and he was like, I have never been to a Broadway show in my life and I enjoy the show so much. <laughs> so it's important to know that you don't have to be a theater geek to understand or like the show. Actually, I love the fact that Keegan makes fun of the of the musical theater tropes, which is hilarious. And so, yeah, the show is well, well written, well rounded. It's so beautiful. It's full of comedy, full of music, full of amazing dancing, of course, but also has a lot of layers because, as you as you noticed, all the Shmigadunians, we are like mirrors into the challenges and maybe faults of personality that that that, that our our lead couple ha has. So, so we do, we do help them realize that, you know, they, maybe they already have true love. Maybe they're just being distracted by these nonsensical things. Right. But, uh, and I love that about the show. It has many layers to be honest, and it's just a fun, uh, filled with joy, uh, project. Nice. So when you first read the script, what did you think Schmigadoon was about and does it differ from what it's actually about? <laughs> No, I got it completely since the first read. I, I understood exactly what Cinco Paul was trying to do, and I loved it, and I understood the the concept and the and the you know the language, the narrative. It was very clear to me. I, I knew exactly what the show was going to be, and I was ecstatic to be a part of. Nice, nice. So you play Doc Lopez. What did you find most compelling about that character? I just uh love the fact that Cinco was super generous and kind to write that character for me. Uh, and so I, I, I was very, uh, you know, the, the amount of gratitude I have for him is, is uh, tremendous. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's it, I love the fact that they, with Ariana DeBose's character, with Emma Tate and Doc Lopez, we will start playing strongly this Friday in episode four, five, and six, because we represent the love triangle or the possibility of a serious relationship um, outside of, of the main couple, right? Uh, but also, I love, you've seen the whole series, right? Yes. I, I remember, I like the, uh, a scene where Doug Lopez tell, says uh, to, to Melissa, like, I'm ready to be whoever you want me to be and say whatever you want me to say. And that's 
wow, maybe Melissa goes like, oh, I think I'm a bit of a control freak. Uh, so yes, Josh has a lot of things that he needs to he needs to work on, on his own, right? But also Melissa is like, you should propose like this. You should love me like this. Well, yeah. So I, I love the fact that every single Shmigadunian helps uh, the main couple understand their, their challenges and become better humans. That's awesome. So is there a musical that you would not be like you wouldn't mind being stuck in all of them that's uh <laughs> they ask us these questions it's incredible because we love do it we love musical theater right so they ask us which musical that's an impossible question to 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 answer because there you know you're not you like the music of this one the acting of this one the narrative of, the narrative of the other one so to pick one musical at least to me, it's impossible. I don't know if my fellow castmates have uh, have answered that question uh, correctly, but to me, it's impossible. I would have to say all of them. Okay, okay, fair enough, <laughs> fair enough. Maybe so, not Sweeney Todd because we don't want to die. Ah, yes, that's a, that's good. That's good. No meat pies for us. No. <laughs> so, one thing I wanted to uh, just say is that. I think you have an amazing voice. Your character in this Thank show so is very complex. I love the diversity and I just can't wait. I hope there's a season two. So uh, thank you. <laughs> okay. uh, we're talking to you, Apple TV Plus. In case you didn't notice that. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a pleasure, Jaime. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're the best, Kat. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time and for supporting the show. Of course. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Better shake your booties for black girl nerds. Better shake your booties for black girl nerds.